morning. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We have been studying a series called The Power of Praise, and we're looking at different words in the Bible that relate to praise. As we started with the word praise, and then we looked at the word feast or festival, and then we have been studying the word rejoice. And then lastly, we studied the word shout. And just to give you a recap and a review briefly, for example, the word rejoice um, has several meanings that indicate great or excessive behavior. And for example, the root, uh, one of the main words, agaliao in Greek means to rejoice exceedingly, be exceeding glad and be overjoyed and it is a feeling and expression of supreme joy notice the high degree that we see there also that word comes from two root words one word means much the other word means to leap and to skip and jump and to leap for joy To show one's joy by leaping and skipping, denoting excessive or ecstatic joy and delight. And we see that in Acts chapter 3, where the lame man went leaping through the temple and praising God. That is showing excessive and ecstatic joy and delight. Also, we see another word in the Hebrew that means to shriek ecstatically and shout with joy. Then we also looked at the word shout, and it means to split the ears, blow an alarm. And then the second part of the definition is to shout in triumph over your enemies, to shout in applause, and to cry, to to raise a cry exulting out loud over your conquered enemy, and to make a joyful noise. Another word means to screech exultingly, and another word means to creak or emit a stridulous sound, to shout for joy, cry out, and be joyful, and to triumph. And then one more word means an acclamation of joy, a clangor of trumpets, jubilee, Loud noise, rejoicing, shouting, and high and joyful sounding. Notice again that none of these words are calm, quiet, and sedate. Where a lot of Christians today, especially in America and uh, some other European countries, we have a very more reserved culture that none of these are reserved. All of these are demonstrative. All of these are loud. None of them are quiet. They are all loud. And to shout at the top of your voice. And so, whereas, you know, I made the comment, the girls might be more likely to squeal and shriek, but the guys can hoop and holler. And they can shout just like they would shout at a football game when their team scores. And these are the kinds of shouts and sounds that God has recorded in his word, the Bible, for us, his people, to make these sounds in rejoicing and in praising the Lord. Hallelujah. And also I mentioned on a program last week about rejoicing that, you know, there are times when people say, well, I just don't feel like rejoicing. You don't have to feel like it. God never said, well, when you feel like it and when you get around to it, go ahead and rejoice. No, it was a command. As a matter of fact, God even set days on the calendar saying on this day, you're going to shout on this day. You're going to rejoice on this day. You're going to celebrate with great celebration and rejoicing and dancing. He said, this is the day to do it. Well, you know, in the New Testament, we know that every day is the day of the Lord, that we rejoice in the Lord always. 
Paul said in Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. So it's not just reserved for a certain calendar day as they did in the Old Testament or for certain battles that they had to win. And they would go out and they shouted and praised and rejoiced and they got the victory. But now it's for every day. So it's not waiting to feel like it. Remember, joy is not a f- based on physical circumstances. It is a fruit of the spirit. It is from God in God. And it's because of God in you that you rejoice. And remember, we also said that praise produces joy because we read in Psalm 100 verse four that you enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So you go into his presence with thanksgiving and praise, but then also uh, Psalm 22 Three, God inhabits the praises of Israel. So God will, you will enter his presence, but God will also inhabit your presence when you praise. And then Psalm 1611, in your presence is fullness of joy and Acts 228, you fill me with joy in your presence. So how do you get joy? Get in his presence. How do you get in his presence? You start by being thankful. We talked last week about thankfulness and being thankful. And if you're not thankful, well, let, I said it like this, a sad heart is an unthankful heart. A joyful heart is a thankful heart. So if you're sad, if you're down, if you're gloomy, if you're depressed, get over it and get over it right now. Just stop it. You are showing God that you are very unthankful for everything he has already done for you. You're unthankful for your physical provisions and needs being met and provided. You're unthankful for your spiritual needs being met. And you may, you know, people are are usually grumbling about what they don't have rather than being thankful for what they do have and what they have already received. And so a thankful heart is the first key and step to receiving joy. But thanksgiving or thankfulness enter, leads you into praise. Thankfulness leads you into praise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. So you start with thankfulness saying, thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you for the sun shining. Thank you for the blue sky. Thank you for the birds. Thank you for my... And like I said last week, you've got running water, indoor plumbing, indoor toilets. You got a shower. You got a bed. You know, all these kinds of things that you can be thankful for. Thank you, Lord. And then that leads you into praise, praising the Lord. And then praise and the rejoicing in the Lord brings God into your presence and you into his presence in which there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so that's a little bit of what we talked about in the last couple weeks on this series of praise. Now, we had actually started the series about praise, showing you that praise brings victory. And we looked at different examples where um, Israel had to go against uh, Jericho. They came to Jericho and they shouted with shouts of joy. And then the walls of Jericho came down. And then we saw that after that, they, it, in, um, in Chronicles, Jehoshaphat led or directed his singers to go in front of the army and the singers praised the Lord and they, um, God said an ambush against the enemy. They won the victory over the enemy. Then we saw Paul and Silas in jail and praise broke off the ch- chains and opened the prison doors. And then we saw even Jesus in hell raise up his voice to praise the Lord. And it actually brought the presence and anointing of God into hell to break his chains and to resurrect him from the dead. And so we see that praise will break off your chains. Praise will bring down the walls. Praise will um, set an ambush against your enemy. Amen and hallelujah. And so now I just want to Continue with a couple more, a uh, few more words and phrases that we see in the Bible that relate 
to praise and how we are supposed to praise. I want us to look at the word dance. The word dance in the Hebrew, actually I've, I've seen a couple words. One is karar and another is cool or keel, whichever way it is, um, two different um, variations. The first word karar means to whirl, to whirl and dance. The second word cool or keel, whichever variation it is, means to twist, dance and whirl about. I want us to look at Second Samuel chapter 6. And this is when David brings the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. Second Samuel Chapter 6, verses 12 to 16. Verse 12. Now King David was told, The Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went down and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with Rejoicing. That's one of the words we looked at. Rejoicing means joy, gladness, and gaiety. So he came up with rejoicing. Verse 13, when those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Verse 14, David wearing a linen ephod. Now the linen ephod was a priestly um, garment that he should not have worn as a king, except that he was entering into a priestly role in his worship and dancing and praising. So it says David wearing a linen ephod danced. That's the word karar to whirl and dance before the Lord. He danced before the Lord with all his might, all his might. Is that demonstrative? Yes. Is it using physical energy? Yes. Is it using the body? Yes. We've talked about praise. And I commented before, some people will stand in church and not even open their mouth to sing. And yet they'll say, well, I've got a praise in my heart. That's a downright lie. Because Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. And if it's not coming out, it's not in you. It's not in you. You got to get it in you. And sometimes you, well, most of the time you have to start by putting it on, put on the garment of praise. It says in Isaiah chapter 61, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You got to put it on. You've got to clothe yourself with this. This is something you don't just go dance and whirl about by accident and find yourself doing it. No, it's something you make a decision It is a conscious decision. I'm going to do this. I'm going to dance. I'm going to shout. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to praise the Lord. It doesn't just, it's not just some feeling that comes over you and takes over your body and your mouth and your actions. And then all of a sudden you find yourself doing it without realizing what you're doing. No, it is a conscious decision and it is a choice to do it. It's a choice. And as I said, yes, a lot of churches are pretty quiet. What you can do, though, if you're not comfortable doing it in church, that's okay. But you need to do it at home. You need to do it at home. Do it in your bedroom. Do it in your bathroom. Do it in your kitchen. Do it in your living room. Do it in your family room. Do it wherever you can in your house. As a matter of fact, you need to take a praise break every day. Every day, don't let one day go by without stopping and taking a few moments to shout and rejoice and praise the Lord. Take some time every single day, either when you get up or before you go to bed, when you get home from work, take time every day. You take other kinds of breaks every day. Take a praise break. Every single day. And you will see victories and breakthroughs in your life. You will see a change even in your attitude and disposition. And you will see that the heaviness leaves you when you put on the garment of praise 
for the spirit of heaviness and you receive the oil of joy and it turns your dance, your mourning into dancing. Praise the Lord. And so we see here, David danced before the Lord with all his might. Second Samuel six fourteen, And then verse 15, while he and the entire house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts. There's the word teruah that we talked about. Clamor, clangor, acclamations of joy, jubilee, loud noise, rejoicing, shouting, high and joyful sounding. So they came up with that, those shouts and with the sound of trumpets. And verse 16, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, Water watched from a window, and when she saw King David leaping and dancing, we talked about the leaping, the word rejoice means to leap and to skip and jump, leaping and dancing before the Lord, she de- despised him in her heart. Why? Because he was being demonstrative. And yet, that was one of the very major things about David that pleased the Lord. That is one of the main reasons why the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. As we had looked also last week at scriptures in Zephaniah um, 3, 17, God is rejoicing. And in Proverbs 8, we saw wisdom is rejoicing. Wisdom is, is the spirit of Jesus and the Holy Spirit rejoicing God has rejoiced and is rejoicing and always will rejoice through eternity. He is a rejoicing God. And so when David was rejoicing before the Lord, he pleased the Lord. He pleased the Lord. Do you want to do something that pleases the Lord? Do you want to please God today? I encourage you then even right now, wherever you are, if you're in your bathroom or bedroom or kitchen, Or even if you're in your car, you can shout. If you're in your house, you can jump and and dance and spin around and say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and great things he has done. And you can rejoice in the Lord today and you will please him. That is one of the things that pleases him. So if you want to please God today, lift up your voice and shout a praise and hallelujahs and rejoicings to the Lord. Praise God. And so that's what David did. And that's one of the things that made him one of the main things that made him a man after God's own heart, a man who greatly pleased the Lord. And therefore, God's favor and blessing was on David because he pleased the Lord. And so I want to let's look at a couple more scriptures. Also, we see in Psalm 149, Psalm 149, verse three. Let them praise his name in the dance. That's the word keel or cool, whichever um, v- v- variation it is, to twist and dance and whirl about. Twist and dance and whirl about. That's Psalm 149.3. Let them praise his name in the dance. Praise his name in the dance. And we saw um, at the beginning of this series that in Psalm 149, it talks about this is one of our weapons. May the praises of God be in their mouth and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the on the nations and to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with shackles of iron. That this is one of our spiritual weapons against Satan and the demonic spirits is this spirit And uh, is praise and rejoicing. And in the same chapter, verse three, let them praise his name in the dance. So this is for Christians. This is for believers. It says this is the heritage of the saints. We are his saints. This is for Christians and believers to praise his name in the dance. Praise him in the dance. Praise him in the dance. Psalm 149, 3. Also Psalm 150, verse 4. Praise him, that's halal, hallelujah, with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. So we see in both of these chapters that we are called, the saints are called to praise the Lord in the dance. 
praise him with dancing. Praise the Lord. And so dancing should be a part of your routine. Dancing should be a part of your routine. It will take practice. None of these things are automatic, especially if you're a very stiff person. You're going to have to loosen up just like you would in exercises, do some stretches and you bend your your knees and you twist to the side. You lift your arms, you stretch, you do stretches physically to get loosened and limbered. You're going to have to do some praise stretches. And some of that will mean you just start by jumping up and down in place a little bit. You just spin around in a circle a little bit, and then you shout, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You're going to have to limber up because you've probably been far too stiff in your praises. So it takes practice. It's not something that comes automatic. You say, well, I'm just not that type of person. Well, you guess what? In our culture, really nobody is. It's a problem with the culture, not with you, with, with, um, the command. It's not that we're excused away from doing it just because I'm not that kind of person. No, you need to change. You need to limber up. You need to become this kind of person. This is the kind of person God has called us to be. This is the kind of thing God has called us to do. It's part of being a born again Christian. It's part of being a child of God. It's part of being a saint. These are the things that God has set forth in his word that we should be praising him like this and praising him in the dance. Praise God. And then I want us to look at another phrase in the Bible. And this is relating to praise. Clap your hands. Now, this is one that we're a little more familiar with. We can do this in church. Clap your hands. Psalm 47 1. Psalm 47 1 says, Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Now, there's the word shout again. Ruah with the voice of triumph. But it says, Clap your hands. Now, the word clap there is the word taka. It means to clap, strike, thrust, or give a blow or blast. It means to thrust or drive as a weapon like thrusting a sword, give a blast or give a blow to strike or clap hands. And so what we see here is clapping your hands and then shouting with a great shout, Ruah, the great shout, shouting loudly. And so Psalm 47, one, oh, clap your hands, all you people and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. And then also in Psalm 98, Verse eight, Psalm 98, eight says, let the floods clap their hands. Now that's a different word, maka. Let the floods clap their hands and let the hills be joyful together. Now that word joyful again is run on that rejoicing word. But maka means to strike and clap the hands in joy or a clap of exultation, a clap of exultation. So we see here that even God, I told you before that even nature, inanimate objects, the mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing. Even Jesus said, these stones will cry out. And we see God has created the universe to be a singing, dancing, rejoicing, praising universe. Even the inanimate objects were created by God to praise him, to be joyful, to rejoice, to clap. As we see even here in Psalm 98, 8, let the floods clap their hands. And so even God's creation is created to rejoice, clap, praise, shout, rejoice, be um, to exult in the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then let's look at one more phrase in the Bible. The word or the phrase that um, it relates to raising your hands or lifting up your hands, lifting up your hands. Hands in Psalm 63, verse four, Psalm 63, four, I will praise you as long as I live and in your name, I will lift up my hands, lift up my hands. 
and Psalm 134, 2. The first one was Psalm 63, 4, then Psalm 134, verse 2. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and Praise the Lord. This is another thing that a lot of Christians are too stiff to do. Now, there are quite a few that do lift their hands, but there's a quite a few that don't and they are uncomfortable. This is your stiffness that you need to get loosened up. You need to get limbered up because the Bible tells us to lift up our hands, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. So for those of you who don't like to raise your hands, I'm telling you again, get over it, get over it and raise your hands, lift up your hands. You can do this in church, in the sanctuary. You can also do this at home, lifting up your hands unto the Lord to give him praise. Hallelujah. So we see clapping your hands and lifting or raising your hands to the Lord in acts of praise and worship to God. Well, I just want to say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Take time right now and throughout the day today to praise the Lord. Take praise breaks to shout praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank the Lord for the th- great things he has done for me and for my family. And as As you do, you will see victories and breakthroughs in your life, in areas of your life, your family, your finances. Also, you will see and feel and know the joy of the Lord coming upon you and in you and filling you, filling your heart with joy. Now, join me again tomorrow. Remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.